Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Prayer, Monday of Holy Week, and it's good to welcome you, our dear sister Jan, and to those who've not logged in, you're welcome. But first we light our candle for Holy Week, and we call on the Spirit of God to implant within our heart a reawakening to all that Christ suffered for us. But he didn't suffer it under obligation or out of duty. He did it out of love. As you and I who are here, we come in love, not under sufferance or guilt, but we come to walk with the beloved in a spirit of brotherly, sisterly love. So we welcome you to our morning prayer this Monday of Holy Week. <clears throat> and it's good to welcome our dear sister Amir and dear brother John. Welcome, welcome. So let us now ring our Tibetan bells for unity and peace this Holy Week, especially in the Middle East and in Jerusalem. And our Monday prologue of our brother and sister Racines of Mount Sinai in Egypt, we read, We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly Mother, and all the great Masters, and reverence to the holy, pure, and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday morning, we commune with the angel of life, saying, Angel of life, enter my limbs and give strength to my whole body. And as you say these words, you contemplate the trees in the Creator's garden, the forest, the landscape, and you come with Mother Nature as you stand in the presence of these magnificent trees and embrace the spirit of the tree, the tree divas, and you ask them permission to hold them, to hug your tree and feel the vibrational healing energy flow from these magnificent structures into your entire body. Sense the peace, the love, and the joy from these sacred trees in the Creator's garden. Amen. Amen. And our opening prayer this morning is, you've guessed right, from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. Thanks be to you, O God, that I have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. May it be a day of blessing, O God, of every good gift, a day of new beginnings given. Help me to avoid every sin and the source of every sin to forsake. And as the mist scatters from the crest of the hills, may each ill haze clear from my soul, O oh God. And welcome, dear Brother Kaj, to Brother Kevin. Ah, and dear Magdalena, welcome. Welcome. And our hymn this morning is from the older version of the hymn book, Hymns for Living. And my heart was guided to read this. Gather us in is the theme of the hymn. Gather us in, thou love that fillest all. Gather the rival fates within thy fold. Throughout the nations sound the clarion call. Beneath love's banner, all should be enrolled. Gather us in, we worship only thee. In varied names we stretch a common hand. 
in diverse forms a common soul we see, in many ships we seek one promised land. Thine is the Roman strength without the pride, oh sorry, thine is the mystic life great India craves, thine is the Pharisee's sin destroying beam, thine is the Buddhist's rest from tossing waves, and thine is the empire of vast China stream. Thine is the Roman strength without the pride, thine is the Greek's glad world without its graves, and thine is the law that is the Jew's life guide, thine is the Christian's faith the grace that saves. Gather us in, thou love that fillest all. Gather thy rival fates within thy fold. Throughout the nations sound the clarion call. Beneath love's banner, all shall be enrolled. What a lovely hymn. And yet many email me to say how could I be involved with the Unitarians when they don't believe in God. Well, that's not true because I go to their services regularly and I have to be honest, I've never felt such a welcome from my Unitarian brothers and sisters than I ever felt in my own Catholic Church here. There they open their arms to you. There's Buddhist, Hindu, Sikh, agnostic, quite a few Christians who felt disillusioned by their church. And yet the ceremony, the services are so uplifting. And the people are just beautiful friends. So I feel I've been truly blessed. And I thank God for their love and friendship. Amen. Now, I'm guided again by my L heart to read from Psalms now. Psalm 72, that's page 115. O God of love, grant to your sons and servants the grace to represent you effectively in our discordant world. Give us the courage to put our lives on the line in communicating life and truth to all your creatures, wherever they may be found. Where there is injustice, may we diagnose its cause and discover its cure. Where there is bigotry, teach us how to love and how to encourage others to love. And where there is poverty, help us to share the wealth that has come from your hand. Where there is war and violence, may we be peacemakers that lead men to your eternal peace. Help us, O oh God, to become what you have destined and empowered us to become where there is darkness. May we become the rays of your sun that banish the gloom of lonely lives. Where there is drought, let us like fresh showers that turn barren deserts into green meadows. Where there is ugliness and distortion, enable us to portray the beauty and order of your will and purposes. Great God, you are in our world. Your majesty is reflected in your creation about us. But there are multitudes who do not feel your concern or acknowledge your love. It is because your servants have failed to carry out your command and commission that we have yet to sense the significance of our salvation and the purpose of our mission. Forbid, O oh God, that we be deaf to the cries of the poor 
and indifferent to those who have needs. May we identify with those who are oppressed and help to bear the burdens of those who suffer about us. May we hear your voice of concern and feel your loving touch through your servants who are in this world to manifest you to men about them. The glory is yours, O God, and we shall praise your name and celebrate your cause together. Ah, that is so Franciscan. It's like the prayer of St. Francis, but elaborated. But how true are those words? Many have become indifferent today, where so many are more preoccupied about the me, the self, and they forget about God's whole family. But Jesus reminded us that if one child of God is hurting or suffering, then the whole family of God feel that hurt. Let us give thanks to God for the roof over our head, for the warm bed we sleep in, for running water, for food on our plate, for clothes that we wear, shoes on our feet. And yet, many of God's children, our brothers and sisters, don't have any of those luxuries, and yet we in the West complain. We complain. We've become lazy, stubborn, and to some extent idolatrous towards material things. What does material things matter if you haven't got God's peace? I've met and had the privilege of meeting as a nursing monk, many who had very little, even no shoes on their feet when they came begging at the monastery door for food and shelter. And yet what they did have was an incredible faith. And it put many of us monks to shame because everything in the monastery was provided even to the toothpaste and toothbrush. And yet before us at our door were those who through no fault of their own were impoverished, but yet their love of God was truly mind-blowing. So never let us put down those who are homeless, because for all you and I know, it could be Christ in disguise. Let us be still. Let us be still and embrace the essence and the spirit of this beautiful week, Holy Week, where we prepare our heart to experience on Easter Sunday a resurrection of our Holy Spirit within us. But to achieve that, we have to go through with Jesus and try and understand why he did what he did for us. I'm guided now to pick up this little book, Peace Prayers from the World's Religions by the Reverend Roger Grant Granger, Feeling Hopeless. From Psalm 137, verse one, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. And from the Jewish tradition from Psalm 69, verses one and two, save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink 
in the miry depths where there is no foothold. And from the Upshanids of the Hindu tradition, we pray for all who are in despair. We pray for those experiencing what appears to be final defeat. We pray for those who are mocked by the per people persecuting them. We pray for people contemplating or committing suicide. And we pray for those trying to help them. From unreality, lead me to reality. From darkness, lead me to light. From death, lead me to immortality. And from the Brahma Kumaras, faith is the seed of victory and the foundation of making the impossible possible. So we come to this table of love and we break bread together where we remember each other. So in the silence of our heart, let us name bless and release to God whatever may be troubling us at this hour. And I call on the Lord Christ to touch each and every one of you here. I ask the Lord Christ to stand in front of you and place his healing hands on your heart. Now sense his love Sense his power flow through your heart. And I bring this morning the many who've asked for prayer, but especially dear Sister Magdalena and her personal requests. I bring Brother John and his dear friend George, whom he's caring for in California, for Sister Meredith Josephine in Georgia, and the beautiful vision that with God's help she's establishing there. For our dear Sister Diane, that she's stronger. For Sister Eleanor and Elizabeth in Philadelphia. For all my brothers and sisters in the Teo community who may be struggling today. I bring Sister Jan and her friend Sonia, who's terminal and her brother Lawrence. I bring <clears throat> Brother Kaj and Sister Paula, his wife, and her amazing ministry to children with special needs, and for their two sons, Lucas and Marcus. I bring this morning, dear Emir, who's with us here from Derry Town, and her dear friend, Moira, and her son Yuan and her friend Cora, but I also bring her son and daughter. I bring Kevin, I bring dear John and his partner Moira and his sister Maureen. I bring our brothers and sisters in the community now on retreat, brother Mark in America and brother Chris in Lewis, Sussex, who will be received on Easter Sunday as postulants, and dear Sister Laurie and Sister Linda in America, who come into the novitiate to prepare themselves in 12 months of training to become lay monastics from their own home. I pray today for peace, and I pray, as this is a Christian festival, that we join with all our brothers and sisters of the Christian belief, but we also remember our Jewish brothers and sisters who also celebrate Pesach. And we pray too for those who've no one to pray for them, for all our religious leaders and all the men and women of different faiths who've surrendered their heart to God. We remember them. And we remember Michael who's joined us. Let us be still and just sense the love from Christ's 
healing hands over our heart. Lord, we thank you for allowing us in this generation to walk with you in spirit and to try and experience what you really did for us. I know Osho, the great spiritual teacher, tells us that you never were crucified and that you never died. Well, I don't accept that because if Christ didn't die the death as foretold, then the life I'm living is a mockery because I worship God, but I also give adoration to their son who was crucified out of love for all of us here. So we pray a simple prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our stubbornness, our unwillingness to listen to your voice, our fear and anxieties that so often cloud our judgment, Lord, leading us away from you to wallow in self-pity. Protect us from the evil one, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer is from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. This day and this night, may I know, O oh God, the deep peace of the running wave, the deep peace of the flowing air, the deep peace of the quiet earth, the deep peace of the shining stars, and the deep peace of the Son of Peace. And as I blow out this light, I thank the Lord Christ for touching each and every one of you and granting your requests in his name. Amen. So, my dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of Holy Week reawaken in you that Christ loves you and he demonstrated that love by the horrific sufferings he endured yes he did for love of us what a great God we have who still loves us when we walk away I wish you a restful sleep if it's your bedtime but if not have a good day today. It's the only day we've been given, so let us celebrate it in joy. Amen. Amen. I look forward to your company later this evening, but for now, God bless you. And thank you for being God's prayer partners for peace. Wow.